For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the importance of finding participants. Remember that uh, starting last week, week one of our 16-week course in uh, developing our thesis document, we started talking about the importance of finding participants. So many of you started last week to reach out to those participants. I want to share with you a few questions to consider when you're reaching out uh, to uh, find and maybe confirm with these participants that they are able and willing to participate in your study. I think that um, in some cases they may ask for permissions. We'll talk about that in here in a minute. Uh, it's not too early to be reaching out to them. As we start week two, today's February 2nd of 2021, we're starting week two by, I would say, midweek of uh, this week, you know, later than the, the end of the week. We really need to make sure that we're confident that we have the participants that will provide us the information that we need to do our study. There are some cases where being able to find the participants really is going to determine whether or not you continue with your current study or you change topics. I'm thinking specifically in the case of students with learning disabilities. Of course, you're going to need to find students with those learning disabilities in, a, in order to do your study. If you determine this week that you're not able to find those participants, they're not able to confirm and agree to help you, then you're going to need to change your topic. We're in week two. We have until March 5th to complete our literature review, so it's, it's really important to um, be able to know now that we have those participants who uh, can help us and who are uh, able to uh, participate in our study. So let's take a look at some of the questions to consider. Some of these questions we talked about in class, some of the, the uh, questions that I have listed here, we have spoken uh, maybe one-on-one -on -one in our tutoring sessions. There are a few that we haven't ta talked about. So that's uh, the reason why, why I wanted to kind of summarize and present these five questions that uh, you should ask yourself as you're confirming and communicating and reaching out to your participants. The first question, do you need any special permissions? We have talked at length about this. Uh, some of you have already sent me some of those permissions to sign. Continue doing that if that is a requirement for your case. But consider any informed consent form from institutions. They could be from businesses, from schools, from teachers, from students, anyone that is participating in your study, find out if those per permissions are necessary. If in doubt, I would get the permission in writing. Now, there might be cases where if your participants, the students that you're observing are children, or perhaps those students with learning disabilities, you might also need the permissions from their parents or their guardians to, for them to, uh, uh, for you to include them in your study. The second question to consider, is it possible to record your observations? And this is something really important. We've talked, I think, a little bit about, um, but everyone needs to do observations. Everyone should uh, collect data. You should be able to observe, for example, online classes. If those are um, part of your study, if that is a focus where you're looking at some aspect of teaching that's happening in real time, and in our case nowadays, most of our classes are online. Make sure that you have permission, that they are open to you recording, whether through audio or video, uh, the classes. This also might be something that is included in writing in the permissions, right? So ask if that is necessary, but make sure that they know that the recording is only going to be used for analysis purposes. It's only going to be used for the uh, the, the purpose of doing your analysis that you agree to destroy those recordings afterwards after you complete the, the study. In fact, I would wait until you have your title so that until you have everything completed and you've, uh, comp uh, uh, you've met all the requirements uh, for the university. But make sure that you have that conversation with the participants, that they agree to it, that they know the conditions of how you're going to use those recordings, and that your participants will be, um, that their confidentiality will be protected. And um, again, make sure that they, that's very clear. Now with observations, observations are going to be required. They're necessary for doing our study, but they're not the only source of information that you're, that you're gonna be asked to collect. It's also uh, possible that you might include interviews, focus groups, that you might do a document or a content analysis 
surveys, questionnaires. These are additional forms or types of information or data that you're going to require. So make sure that uh, per special permissions include some mention of the types of data that are go that might be required for collecting your uh, or for conducting your study. I'm thinking in the case of a document analysis or what's called a content analysis, there might be cases where you might be you might uh, benefit from having some information about a particular student, perhaps. Uh, this is something we'll work very closely on uh, as your tutor. I'll give you some direction in that sense. But if there's anything that you might need, let's say there might uh, you might ask for some sort of policy, a written policy from a school administrator. Is that data available? It will can you get access to uh, certain policies that the school has? Because that might relate to how the teacher teaches, and uh, that that might be something that you have a conversation about. Uh, if you're not sure about how much to ask or what to, uh, you're not really sure what kind of information you're going to be requiring. This is something that we can talk about in our tutoring sessions. Okay, the next question, have you found extra participants should any back out at the last minute? So it's always good to have a contingency plan. It's better to have a participant and not need them than to need them and not have them. So if, you, if you're planning on, you know, maybe observing two teachers, maybe reach out to one or more uh, additional teachers just to have them in case, right? There, sometimes this happens where you plan on uh, observing a teacher and he or she agrees from day one to help you. And then it comes to observing and you're in the middle of it. And all of a sudden, for whatever reason, you're not getting the information or maybe the teacher uh, has a change of heart and changes his or her mind. These situations can occur, right? They don't occur often, but they can occur. So it's always best to have a backup plan, a contingency plan. So if possible, try to reach out and have a couple of extra participants just in case. The next question, will you need to do an intervention? Now, this is something we haven't spoken a lot about. It's something that um, ideally we don't need to do, right? And the best, the best case scenario would be that you find a teacher that already is doing what you are wanting to observe. So you don't have to intervene at all. You don't need to do an intervention. You don't need to suggest anything. You're basically just an observer of, of their class. So again, this is the ideal situation. But there are cases where maybe the teacher is not doing uh, something currently in his or her teaching practice. Maybe the uh, you're observing you want to analyze a certain piece of technology that the teachers typically don't use or maybe they've never used so in the, those cases you'll need to work closely with the teacher to do an intervention to make suggestions about how they might use that tool for example we will work closely i will give you some suggestions about being careful with doing an intervention Again, we always want to intervene just enough to give us the information that we need. Um, this is usually the recommendation for a qualitative research uh, of this kind that we're, most of you are doing. And so make sure that when you're reaching out now in week one, week two of the semester, at the beginning of the semester as we're just developing our literature review, that you are reaching out to them and and uh, maybe asking them, are they open to try new things? Are they able, based on maybe school policy, can they use a certain piece of technology given the uh, school policy that they have, right, if one exists? So these are questions I think that are very important to have at the beginning so that you know, okay, if they're not doing something, right, that they are uh, able to maybe try something new in their own teaching practice. If you're not sure about how to approach a teacher about their intervention, this is something we can discuss this week uh, beforehand to uh, clarify any doubts that you have. But we do want to be careful not to reveal too much of our study. We don't want to give them more information about the study that might end up influencing how they behave 
when it comes to observing their teaching practice. All right, the final question, are your participants able and willing to take part in the intervention? Okay, this, I actually, it's a two-part question. Um, will you need an intervention? I guess is the key question first, right? Knowing whether or not you'll need to do one. And then if you know you need to do one, are your participants, are they open to doing that intervention? Again, this is a careful conversation that you need to have at this point, so not to reveal too much about your study to your participants. Let me know if you do have any questions about any of these questions that I'm posing here. Um, it's very important that you are confirming your participants in this uh, between today, maybe tomorrow, at the latest, so that we can proceed with developing the rest of your literature review, knowing that we have the participants that are going to likely give us the data that we need to answer our research questions. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions about reaching out and finding your participants, make sure that you send me a message via chat in Microsoft Teams.